What is going on guys? Welcome back to the fifth episode of the Flash tutorial series here on Neural9. In this video today, we're going to learn how to surf static files like images, style sheets, JavaScripts, and also how to integrate Bootstrap into Flask. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn how to work with static files in Flask in this video today, which means we're going to learn how to work with images, CSS files, JavaScripts, and so on. How can we load these things into our HTML files? How can I specify the path to an image? How can I link to a style sheet? How can I load a JavaScript from the respective directory? How is this done in Flask properly? And how do I work with static files in general? In addition to that, we're also going to use that knowledge to integrate Bootstrap into our Flask application, just so you see how you can integrate something simple like a CSS framework. Uh, and yeah, this is what we're going to do in this video today. So this is our starting point. We have a simple Flask application, just an index endpoint rendering the index HTML file, which just extends the base HTML template. We just have a simple hello world heading here. And now let's say my goal is to display an image here. So let's say I want to have an image tag down here. This is basic HTML. I have an image. The image has a source and uh, the image also has an alternative text. So something like this here. Um, and that is basically our image here. How do I do that now in Flask? So where do I put the images? How do I link to the images? Because for our templates, it's very simple. We have a template folder and we just specify the name of the HTML file. So we have the templates, all the HTML files here in the templates directory. And then in order to load the HTML files, I just have to specify the file name. How do I do that now with static files? The way you do that with static files is very simple to the way you do that with templates, you define a static folder. So you have to add an additional parameter here, an additional keyword argument called static folder equals and then you can choose the name of the static folder, usually you call this static. And then in addition to that, we also want to specify a static URL path. So how do we uh, get there? And what I like to do or what is usually done is you just pass slash so a simple slash and then you can access all the different directories uh, from the static directory just after the slash. So in addition to templates now here we add an additional directory called static and in this directory what I like to do and what is usually done is you have different directories for the different types of static files that you want to surf. So you can have something like IMG or images you can call this whatever you want I like to call it IMG then you have maybe another one for uh, CSS. And then maybe you have another one for scripts, or you can call it JavaScript or JS, whatever you want to call it. So CSS, IMG, JS, again, you can call this uh, CSS images, scripts, something like this it doesn't really matter. But now you have the static directory, the static folder, which is also defined here in the application. And when I now uh, put an image here. So for example, I have here the prepared logo.jpg just in neural nine logo, I can just take it, drag it into IMG. And now this image is in the static folder. And all I have to do to display it in the index HTML file is in the source, I have to say slash IMG slash logo.jpg. And it's automatically going to recognize since I have static as the folder and the URL path is slash, I can just go into slash IMG because I'm already in static when I go slash, I can go IMG logo JPEG. And that's it. So I can run this application. And you're going to see that we have the neural nine logo here. Very simple. And this now works, of course, with style sheets with scripts, whatever you want to do, you can do that. Uh, so for example, I can go ahead and I can create a file called style.css. And here maybe I can create a class special. And the special class here, I want to say that the color of the text in that class has to be red. And the font size has to be I don't know, 18 PT. And then I can go into my index HTML file, I can create maybe a span or something, give it a class special. And I can just add hello here, then I can go to my application. Uh, and of course, we're not going to see anything for uh, first of all, let's, let's make this a paragraph. Uh, but of course, we also need to, uh, to include the style sheet into our uh, HTML template. So let me just show you again, that we have hello down here. So the styling is not applied, even though I had the class 
uh, set to special, of course, we need to also include this CSS file. And how you usually do that is you go to the head section, which is of course, in our base template, not in our index file. Uh, and here I do a simple link rel equals style sheet, type equals text CSS, and the source uh, or the path is equal to slash CSS slash style CSS like this. And then I can load the page again. And you can see the styling is applied, because it loads the static files from the static directory. Um, what else I can do is I can create a JavaScript. So for example, I can go and I can say, um, I want to have a simple JavaScript that displays some pop up after five seconds. So I can go ahead and I can say, uh, hello.js. And I can define window on load is equal to a function that is called when the window is loaded. And this function, what it does is it sets a timeout. And there's another function in here. And what we basically do is we just alert, which is just pop up the warning, hello world. And we do that after 5000 milliseconds. So after five seconds, basically, uh, that is our JavaScript. Now this alone won't do anything. If I open the page and wait for five seconds, nothing's going to happen. Because of course, the script is not loaded in the index HTML file, I have to load the script again from the static directory. Uh, for example, here at the bottom, I can just say script, and then um, source is equal to uh, slash JS, hello, JS, like this, I'm not sure if I have to specify a type, I don't think so. Now we can wait for five seconds, and we should get a pop up. After five seconds, there you go. Hello world. And yeah, this is the basic idea of how you load images and CSS files and JavaScript files, everything that's static can be just placed here. And you can just access it because you defined in the app py file here in the definition of the app, you defined a static folder and a static URL path. So we can use this now, of course, to also integrate bootstrap. So we can go to the bootstrap website, which is this one here. Um, and basically, you can just download the compiled CSS and JavaScript, you can just uh, download the zip file, which I have here. And then we can go and open files, I can just open this. And here we can see we have JS and we have CSS. So all I have to do is I have to go to static JS, I can take all these files here, I can extract them, I can go back, I can go to CSS, I can go up here, CSS, take all these files, drag them in here. And now we have bootstrap basically installed uh, in our flask application that was already it. The only thing that you need to do now to actually be able to use bootstrap is you have to, of course, uh, link the style sheet and uh, load the JavaScript. So I can say link rel style sheet, type text CSS, and then slash CSS slash, and then bootstrap.css. And then also here, I can go and I can say, script source is equal to slash JS slash bootstrap .js. There you go. And now in index, for example, I can go ahead, let's remove the image. Uh, I can go ahead and add a button or an anchor tag. So I can just say, going nowhere, let's just use a filler here. Um, I want to have some button text here. And I can go ahead and I can say class equals and now btn, btn primary, for example, which is uh, these two are bootstrap classes that define uh, the styling of the button, you can see this is now a bootstrap button. And of course, if I change this to button uh, danger, I will get a red button. That is bootstrap, as you can see, loaded and working. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.